I'm very happy and grateful to have been invited to present here at Stoicon X Brazil 2020. So the topic that I'm going to be talking about is the doctrine of the indifference and why it is that Stoics shouldn't be completely indifferent to the indifference. Before I get started, I'd like to uh, say thanks, of course, to everybody who's watching, to Claudia for the invitation and for organizing this great event, and especially to the translators who are going to make it possible for us to communicate across different languages. As somebody who engages in translation work myself, I know how difficult that work can be, and I am incredibly grateful for it. My Portuguese uh, extends to basically being able to say muito obrigado, and that's about it. So let me jump right into my presentation then. The key issue here is that one of the distinctive features of the Stoic school is what we call the doctrine of the indifference, namely the, the idea that there are things that are good, things that are bad, and then a wide range of other things that are actually indifferent. In Greek, diaphora, uh, meaning the things that don't make a difference. And we can say, don't make a difference in what way? Well, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. And Stoicism is not unique in saying that some things just don't have any value or don't make a difference at all. Aristotelians can say that, Epicureans can say that, pretty much anybody can say that. What makes Stoicism unique is that there's so many things that go into that. So, you know, if we think about um, wealth as, as a prime example that we're going to talk about a little bit later on, being wealthy, being poor, being in the middle, all of that is strictly speaking indifferent from a Stoic perspective. And so Stoics talk about things outside of our control or things that are externals being indifferent instead of talking the way that other virtue ethicists do, uh, talking about things being lesser goods or lesser bads or evils. So for example, an Aristotelian would say that pleasure is not the good, but it is a good. It's not something that is indifferent and pain is not the bad, but it certainly is a bad thing. Stoics would say, no, those things are actually indifference. And it's very easy to gather the impression that we, we shouldn't care about externals or indifference at all. And that would come from a, you might say, selective or superficial reading of Stoic texts. But there are some doctrines that, for example, Epictetus is going to give us that would lead us to that conclusion quite easily when he tells us that we should withdraw our desire and aversion from externals as much as possible. Is that not telling us we should be indifferent to them? Um, when we should say to things, you are nothing to me, that's being indifferent as well. Um, when we say that nothing external can really harm or benefit us, that sounds like we're being indifferent. And then when we say that the only things that really matter are vice and virtue, misery and happiness, that seems like we're saying everything else should just be, you know, left to, to do what it's going to do. We shouldn't care about it. We shouldn't be concerned about it. And this can go so far as to say we shouldn't even worry about what other people think or feel. And I think if we go too far with that, that's a bit of a dangerous view. Some people like that because uh, this, this doctrine can be quite comforting or consoling the view that we can sort of wall ourselves up in ourselves and be these individuals who don't have to be connected with the, the rest of the myriad things of the world. We don't have to be emotionally invested. We don't have to have worries or anxieties or have responses or responsibilities. But we do have responsibilities, and that's where we should start thinking about this. Before that, though, let's let's look at something that Marcus Aurelius says, um, as you know, sort of representative of this. He says, "To live a good life, we have the potential for it if we can learn to be indifferent to what makes no difference." This is how we learn, looking at each thing, both the parts and the whole, keeping in mind that none of them can dictate how we perceive it. They don't impose themselves on us. And he goes on you know, telling us uh, traditional Stoic ideas. But the, the core idea there is that 
the things that don't make a difference, we should be indifferent to them. Later on, he tells us that we can use nature as the index for this. Some things nature is indifferent to. If it, it privileged one over the other, it would hardly have created both. And if we want to follow nature to be of one mind with it, we need to share in, notice what he says, it's indifference to privilege pleasure over pain, life over death, fame over anonymity is clearly blasphemous. Nature doesn't do that. And when I say that nature is indifferent to them, I mean that they happen indifferently at different times to the things that exist and the things that come into being after them through some ancient degree of providence. So once again, we see, well, nature is indifferent to these things. We should imitate nature in this respect. We should follow nature. Doesn't this sound like traditional Stoic uh, ideas and values? Well, it sounds like some of them, but we have to contextualize these. So let's, let's look at the indifference very briefly. Um, like I mentioned, adiaphoria, the things that don't make a difference. And so don't make a difference in, in what way? Here's where we want to turn to Diogenes Laertes, who summarizes Stoic doctrine in book seven of his Lives of the Philosophers. And he tells us that there are two different meanings to indifferent according to the Stoics. One is things that do not contribute to happiness or misery. You can be happy or miserable without them, but use of them in certain ways contributes to happiness or misery. We're going to come back to that notion of use in just a few minutes. The other things that he says that are indifferent are things that have no power to stir inclination towards or against. And the word that he's using there is uh, the same word that we can translate as choice and rejection, horme and aforme. You see these already <clears throat> when uh, Epictetus tells us that these are things that we actually have control over in Enchiridion 1 and in Discourses 1.1. Uh, so what are examples of things that are indifferent? Wealth versus poverty. From a Stoic perspective, neither being wealthy nor being poor is going to make us happy or miserable because neither of them are going to make us virtuous or vicious. They can play a role in that though. Pain versus pleasure. Obviously we, we are averse to pain, but from a stoic perspective, the aversion that we have towards pain should not be the same sort of reaction as we do when we have horror or we turn away from vice. Health versus illness. This is something that many of us uh, experience firsthand, isn't it? High status versus low status, physical attractiveness versus physical ugliness. Why are these things indifferent? They're not indifferent because they don't matter at all. They, are, they do have some value. They don't have value to the extent of making us happy or miserable in the genuine sense, and having them doesn't make us good or bad. So a painful life is not necessarily a bad life. You can live with chronic pain and be a virtuous person. You can also let your chronic pain get to you and be a miserable person and, and you know, let everybody down and do all sorts of other things. Just like you, if you're poor, it may be harder in some respects to, you know, exercise virtue, not just because you need, you know, money as a means or something like that, but because you're presented with so many things that make it difficult, right? But they don't by themselves determine anything. So, you know, a common mistake is to think that these don't matter at all from a Stoic perspective. There's a tendency to equate the uh, indifferent, the externals, what's not in, in my control to the, to, to the degree that we withdraw from all of these. And that goes against uh, a Stoic approach. As a matter of fact, there might even be a sort of pridefulness in this withdrawal from everything in that way. We should think about whether the, the indifference do have any value. If they don't have the value that makes us happy or miserable, what, what do they have? So there's a very important distinction that's made between the classical Stoics and some other philosophers on this matter. If you want to see the best discussion of this, go to Cicero's On the Ends and see what he has to say about Pyro and Aristo. They said that nothing other than virtue mattered as far as human happiness and as far as our duties. The cynics also seem to be saying something like that. Getting this wrong actually means abandoning stoicism. Uh, some things do have value and others don't. There are some genuinely indifferent matters. Uh, some of the examples that the Stoics used were whether your finger is straight or bent, 
picking up something along the way of walking like a twig. Interestingly, one of the things that they actually said wasn't indifferent, pale or dark skin. We should think about that. Um, and one that they use is a very great example. Is the number of hairs on your head even or odd? You know, I've got a nice thick head of hair here. Unless we're like, you know, betting on it or something like that. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference to anything. There's nothing that rides on the number of hairs on my head. But there are on other matters, right? So the, the classic Stoics introduce this distinction between, on the one hand, preferred indifference, and on the other hand, rejected indifference. And this means things that other people would consider to be good or bad, but usually lesser goods or lesser bads by comparison to justice, or to, to virtue rather, right? Virtue, justice as one of the virtues. Um, the Stoics say, no, these are indifference, but they have a kind of value. We can prefer them. We can reject them. We can prefer wealth. We can reject uh, poverty, but none of them are going to make us necessarily virtuous. And so they do have positive or negative value. Um, in, in Diogenes Laertes, we get this formulation of they can contribute to harmonious living. Uh, some preferred indifference are so because they're for the sake of something else. They are useful. Wealth is a useful tool for doing things, right? Poverty is being impeded in that respect. Um, Seneca talks about death in letter 82. He says, death is an indifferent among the things that are not bad and yet have a semblance of badness, not something one can easily ignore. And the indifference do have relations to each other. Diogenes of Babylon, we discover in, um, I believe it's on duties, tells us that wealth does have something to contribute to health. This is Cicero telling us what Diogenes, the fourth scholarch, had to say. And so how can we make something out of indifference? How can we not be indifferent to them? There's a lot of ways. And I'm only going to go into two main discussions of it here because I want to leave plenty of time for us to discuss matters. So I mentioned that there's this, this idea of use, the use or chresis in Greek, usus in Latin, of indifference. It can also be translated as dealing with our approach towards things. And Epictetus leads the way in this respect. He tells us that while some things are indifferent, and this is in a chapter on indifference in things in uh, book two of the discourses, some things are indifferent, but our use of them is not indifferent. How we use them, how we deal with them, what we do with them, that is something that is up to us, epimin in Greek, something that we are responsible for, something that is good or bad on our part. And he talks, uh, for example, about the hypothetical syllogism. The hypothetical syllogism, that's a matter of indifference, you know? It's just a bit of logic over here, an argument that's being made. But the judgment we make about it is not indifferent, he says. We are either involved in knowledge or opinion or delusion. And that matters because that has to do with wisdom or with foolishness. So he tells us that we really need to be careful. That is, we have to have concern rather than being careless. The word for that is uh, amelis when it comes to indifferent things because the use of them is not indifferent. He tells us that the materials, the hule the, in, in Greek, are, not, are indifferent, but the use that we make of them is not. So we need to imitate those who play a, a game, like those who are playing dice or playing ball. Whether or not things go a certain way, that's indifferent. But what, whether we do our job, whether we do a good job, that is up to us. So using indifference carelessly is bad for the pro racist. It's contrary to nature for it. The other thing I'll mention very briefly is that the virtues, far from being a withdrawal from the indifference, they have to do with how we use and arrange and prioritize the indifference. You know, because virtue is good and not an indifferent, it's a mistake to think, as some people do, that it would not be concerned with things that are indifferent. The Stoics are rejecting this idea, this doctrine that, that Cicero discusses. He tells us, if we maintain that all things were completely indifferent, the whole of life would be thrown into confusion and no function or task could be found for wisdom 
the most important of the virtues, right? Since there would be no distinction between the things that pertain to the conduct of life and no choice need be exercised among them. Seneca, in letter 92, gives us some great examples about pursuing and using preferred indifference. He tells us that taking them is an exercise of good judgment. And he, think about these examples he's using. Putting on clean clothing, taking a walk in the proper way, dining as one should. There is an intention there of maintaining a measure that pertains to reason. In letter 82, he also tells us nothing is glorious that does not involve indifference. Illness, pain, poverty, death, none of them are glorious in themselves. As a matter of fact, we'd like to not have those if we could, but nothing is glorious without them. Virtue meets and handles them. Each object takes on a splendor, not its own, when virtue is added to it. So I want to close here by saying we really, we, there are some things that we could be indifferent to. You know, the number of hairs on my head, we don't have to care about that, right? There are a lot of things that we probably should be indifferent to. The results of how things turn out with our intentions. But... There are many things concerning the indifference that we should not be indifferent to at all. As a matter of fact, we should be very concerned and careful about them in a rational way if we want to follow the teachings of the Stoics. So thank you very much. I'm delighted, as I said, to be here, and I look forward to seeing what questions you have about this matter and hopefully having a good dialogue going.